Every Xenomorph Queen Explored. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another marvelous video. Today we are jumping into the world of Aliens. The Aliens franchise has always been a fan favorite. People love seeing terrifying extraterrestrial beings that could haunt their dreams for weeks. So let's explore all the Xenomorph Queens in the series in all their terrifying glory. Buckle up, it's going to be a wild ride. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Cloned Origa Queen. Beginning our list, we have the Cloned Origa Queen, the first of the cloned xenomorphs. She was created by the U.S. military on board the USM Origa. She was also the leader of the cloned xenomorphs. Well, let us take a look into how she was created, shall we? The U.S. military's 10-year project to replicate the xenomorph XX121 species for use as a biological weapon produced the cloned queen. The U.S. military was able to clone Ellen Ripley and the queen chestburster that was developing within her body at the time of her her death by using blood samples that Jonathan Clemens had obtained from her on Fiorina Fury 161. When the Ripley clone reached adulthood, the young chest burster within was medically removed and allowed to develop to the point where she could produce eggs. I really wanted to witness the chest bursting part here, but I guess the artificial cloning takes that out of the equation. Moving on, her eggs were then taken and used to impregnate a group of citizens that Betty's crew had abducted. For a large portion of her early years, the queen was studied by Dr. Wren and his associates and lived in isolation. Nevertheless, she knew that her children were being born and growing in other parts of the Ariga, and she anxiously awaited a chance to flee and establish a hive. Soon after being contained, the lead alien utilized its intelligence and cleverness to start an outbreak, and soon the queen and a few drones were free on the Ariga. The queen swiftly set up a hive in a waste tank at the bottom of the ship as the xenomorphs massacred or drove away the crew. After arriving, she started to grow a second reproductive cycle based on her human DNA, which enabled her to give birth to a different kind of child alive from a womb that developed in place of her normal ovipositor. The procedure was extremely painful for the queen, just like with human births, but ended up resulting in the creation of the newborn, a human xenomorph hybrid creature that was the end result of the genetic mix. The newborn seemed to believe that Ripley 8, who was in the hive, was its real mother right after it was born. Consequently, the creature turned on the queen, severing her upper jaw with its bare hands in order to kill her. That was definitely a bummer. The queen's DNA had been cross-contaminated with Ellen Ripley due to flaws in the cloning procedure, which the Origa scientists who had created her were unaware of. She was not a true xenomorph queen as a result of these modifications. Her ability to give birth to a live child without the need for eggs was made possible by her secondary reproductive cycle, which was by far the most visible sign of these changes. She did, however, also have more subdued changes, such as her skin's shimmering brown-green coloring. The cloned queen had the xenomorph queen's intelligence, but she also had a psychic connection with Ripley 8, which allowed them to converse somewhat telepathically. Talk about creepy. Remarkably, even though the queen was just a young chestburster at the time of her birth, when Dr. Gediman surgically removed her from Ripley 8, she was able to identify many of the scientists who were studying her. Moreover, the cloned queen possessed memories from Ellen Ripley's previous existence due to the genetic memory inheritance of the xenomorph species and the genetic mingling that occurred during the cloning procedure. She was even able to read written human languages. She could read the name tags of General Perez and his colleagues and the sign outside the containment cell's door, which was printed in seven different languages languages that the queen could read. Such a scary alien's death is sure comforting, but the creature that killed her is definitely going to haunt my dreams from now on. The LV-426 Queen. This alien queen's name is not that terrifying at all. It does sound like a vacuum cleaner. The all-new LV-426. But make no mistake, this creature is as terrifying as they come. The LV-426 Queen. That sure is a mouthful. You know what? We will call it the Acheron Queen, since it was born on Acheron. LV-426. The Acheron Queen was the OG leader of the hive at Hadley's Hope Colony, where a USS Sulaco Colonial Marine Unit encountered her. The Acheron Queen was one of the the first xenomorphs to emerge from the early hosts in the Hadley's Hope infestation that developed into a queen and then set up a hive inside the colony's atmosphere processing plant. When she reached adulthood, her drones kept bringing captured colonists to the hive to serve as hosts, and she started laying her own eggs. Lieutenant Gorman's unit of colonial marines led by Ripley came at Hadley's Hope to conduct an investigation. While within the hive, they were nearly destroyed in an attack by xenomorph drones, forcing the few survivors to flee. Deep within the hive, the queen herself 
herself remained hidden, though Ripley and the other survivors later speculated that a queen must exist because what else could lay the eggs that they saw before they escaped. Similar to all the other xenomorph queens, the Acheron Queen has exceptional intelligence. A leader with the capability to command her troops like a military commander, it has been theorized that she orchestrated the attacks on the colony and the Marines. The queen was slain when Ellen Ripley flushed her into space after she had escaped the colony before it was destroyed and made her way to the Sulaco by hiding on board a dropship. That was definitely a quick end to such a horrific-looking creature. Later on, it was discovered that the queen had managed to sneak one egg onto the Sulaco. This would eventually give rise to a royal facehugger, which infected another host with an ordinary embryo after implanting a queen embryo inside Ripley. Specimen 6. Make way for the Escape Master. Specimen 6 is an expert at breaking out from containments. Definitely a unique queen, as Specimen 6 was not born a queen, but rather evolved into one after multiple escapes from containment. Dr. Groves and his team gave rise to Specimen 6 in a controlled environment at the Wayland yutani Research Facility on BG-386. Like the other chestbursters gathered at the institution, she was birthed straight into a containment tube after having gestated inside a human host. She, however, retreated inside her host's chest and escaped the man's mouth as scientists entered the room to collect the creatures. Dr. Groves quickly turned on the room's emergency coolant systems, killing the scientists and containing Specimen 6. However, Carl Bishop Wayland insisted that the baby xenomorph be kept alive because of her intelligence. Six had the number six tattooed on her forehead and was secured in a harness. Groves teased the creature in captivity while she matured and underwent a battery of experiments by Wayland yutani intended to investigate her lethality including being left to murder technicians and an armed security guard. When Six heard the voice of the captured matriarch during one of these tests, she tried to flee through the vents but was quickly apprehended after being gassed unconscious. After making another escape, Six transformed into a Praetorian, constructed a new hive, and finally cocooned Dr. Groves. She let out a deafening cry of triumph after transforming into a new queen and establishing her nest. Well, who would not? It is a great achievement. Reached her full potential and got revenge revenge on people who hurt her, definitely worth a cry of triumph. The Ancient Antarctica Queen. This queen definitely sounds chilly. Get it? Chilly? Like Antarctica? Yeah, yeah, I know it was lame. But moving on to the Ancient Antarctica Queen herself, this creature was taken prisoner by the predators thousands of years ago and kept inside a pyramid in Antarctica where she was supposed to lay eggs. The xenomorphs used humans that were sacrificed as hosts, and as they grew into adults, it was customary for the young predators to hunt them down. After being imprisoned in the pyramid for generations, the Antarctic Queen's offspring eventually outwitted the predators and leveled the human society that the predators had co-founded. Sadly, the queen's attempt to free herself failed, and she remained frozen, unable to move until another rite of passage. In the 2004 movie Aliens vs. Predator, the Antarctica Queen was the villain. The ancient Antarctic Queen was rudely awoken from her icy slumber by clueless humans who somehow managed to turn on the pyramid that had been buried under the icy surface. Unbeknownst to them, they had just stolen the predator's plasma casters, which of course woke up Mama and triggered a nightmarish chain of events. As the queen did her chores laying her eggs, the brood did not waste any more time, implanting embryos into the poor humans. Within the pyramid, all hell broke loose as the xenomorphs, led by Grid, a smart subordinate of the queen, overpowered their enemies rather fast. Everything did not precisely happen exactly as the queen wanted it to, though. The only remaining standing predator, Scar, got together with human Alexa Woods, who survived the horde of xenomorphs. Feeling her children were falling, the queen called for help, and her loyal offspring managed to free her by gnawing through her chains with their acid blood. In a rage, she tunneled out just as the pyramid was destroyed, where she faced off against Scar and Lex. The battle was intense. Scar was almost killed, but Lex managed to stab the queen in the throat, forcing her to retreat. Just in time, Scar came to and speared the furious queen through the head. As a last resort, Lex and Scar chained the queen to a water tower, sending it off a cliff. The queen, still thrashing and snapping, went deep into the freezing ocean below. Meanwhile, Scar did not survive the ordeal, but his legacy lived on as he had been implanted with a chest burster that would become the Gunnison Predalian. The final fate of the Queen is still shrouded in the ice.
the third base queen. It is time to meet the queen who ruled the third base. At the third base, which was a pressurized fortress of bioweapons research, the real queen was not the military hardware or even General Thomas Spears, but the newly arrived xenomorph queen. This royal menace was brought in for study, but quickly became the centerpiece of Spears' grand and somewhat deranged plan to retake Earth using an army of tamed xenomorphs. Spoiler alert, xenomorphs do not do tame, but Spears, ever the paranoid mastermind, had a bright idea. Turn that terraforming colony nearby into a xenomorph playground and seal the colonists in on the basis of a phony bacterial outbreak. What he did not reckon on was that mutiny was brewing faster than his little plan could hatch. As Spears was off chasing deserters through the atmospheric processor, his own men, under Major Powell's leadership, took over the base, no doubt tired of his xenomorph-obsessed antics. But Spears was not the sort of fella to let a little mutiny get in the way of his day. Utilizing pretend ships and wiretapping devices like some sort of space Sherlock Holmes, he outmaneuvered the mutineers and turned his alien pets loose on the base. The rebellion was squashed in less time than it takes to say the word chestburster. The more out of hand things got, the more Spears realized it was time to cut and run. He fled with several ships full of his tamed pets and the queen, leaving the base to the xenomorphs. In the end, third base would turn into nothing but a ghost town, stripped bare from human life. Just another causality in Spears' twisted game of chess, with the queen always taking first. The Karen Base Queen. Well, 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 look who we have here. It is the Queen of Karen Base that ran her hive with a certain elegance in a terrifying sort of way. That is until one genetically engineered rogue xenomorph decided to crash the party. This was not your typical hive drama. This was a full-on royal rumble. The rogue got bigger, nastier, and developed a serious attitude problem, tearing through the Queen's children and Praetorian guards like they were tissue paper. But the Queen was not about to allow this upstart to dethrone her without a struggle. Sharp-witted and seasoned, she outmaneuvered the brute by gradually wearing him down. It was brains against brawn, and in the end, brains triumphed as she finally brought the rogue down. However, her reign was cut short not by some epic battle but rather by a classic case of human error. Kleist, in a stroke of pure brilliance or pure stupidity, overloaded a gun, which caused an explosion that obliterated everything in its path, including the queen. She may have won the battle, but thanks to Kleist's blunder, she lost the war in a blaze of glory, or rather, in very unfortunate explosions. The Pathogen Queen. The Pathogen Queen was the xenomorph version of what a bad sci-fi makeover gone wrong would be by human standards. Due to a dangerous alien pathogen, she had undergone some serious and terrifying changes. Gone was the sleek black exoskeleton common in a typical xenomorph queen's and replaced with an ashen white hue, an external carapace making her look more like an armored nightmare than an alien monarch. Her body glowed with eerie luminescent spots, sharp quills sprouted from her tail and dorsal tubes, and she even developed tusks around her mouth because, as if she was not looking terrifying enough. Perhaps the most striking feature, however, was the right arm. It morphed into a hard club, perfect for bludgeoning anything foolish enough to get close to her. And while she could not reproduce like other queens, this was not a drawback for her. Instead, she channeled all that energy into becoming more agile, aggressive, and downright horrifying terror. She was no ordinary queen, she was one alien wrecking crew. Get it? Wordplay on the one-man wrecking crew, you know what? forget it, let us just move on. She was famous for dispatching 17 recon drones that dared to gather intel on her. Her repertoire of attacks was only equaled by its deadliness, from bludgeoning her foes to firing quills at them, even to scattering acid like some nightmarish sprinkler system, she was a force beyond compare. Alas, for the pathogen queen, her reign of terror was cut short by a colonial marine fire team from the UAS Endeavor. As enhanced and as vicious as she was, she did eventually face her match in the form of military-grade firepower. The pathogen queen may have been a mutation, but even she could not run from the inevitable fate that awaited everyone standing in the military's way. Extinction. The 
flying queen. Flying queens are basically the xenomorph's answer to why not add wings to a nightmare. These are rare aberrant queens flying around space, marrying grace in flight with terror in xenomorph. Hailing from god knows where, these queens sport large membranous wings that look like they were pulled from the fevered dream of a bat, but that wing full of holes is just as functional as it is terrifying. First flapping her wings into our nightmares, the flying queen was a large blue xenomorph in the series Aliens, Space Marines. With her axe-shaped crests and a tail that could double for a medieval weapon, she was an absolute airborne horror. Large talons for feet made sure she could grab anything or anyone, unfortunate enough to be beneath her. In the process of Aliens, Night Strike, one of these flying marvels swooped Atax up, a poor guy clad in an exoskeleton fitted to look just like a queen. Mistaking him for one of her own kind, it was, in fact, a rescue mission from the perspective of the flying queen. Bishop being the strict pragmatist that he is, theorized the Flying Queen thought Atax was another queen in distress. But Atax was not just along for the ride. In Aliens, Swarm, it was revealed that he got his revenge, using his bio-boost armor to bring down the Flying Queen, proving even the skies are not safe from Xenomorph Mayhem. The Flying Queen went to a different level of terror in the operation. Aliens version, with her black color, avian-like talons, and tail that was as much bad as Xenomorph. Her crest, lined with blunted spikes, completed the ensemble, making her the apex flying predator. Flying queens are, succinctly, an extremely rare but terrifying variant of the xenomorph monarch and proof that evolution, or whatever twisted process that created these monstrosities, did not have any problem taking the terror of the ground and extending it into the skies. The Matriarch it is time to meet the Matriarch, also known by her nickname, the Hag Queen. This ugly and scary alien is the xenomorph equivalent of an ancient, battle-hardened war veteran. It is best not to mess with her. This queen had seen it all and lived to tell the tale, if xenomorphs were the talking type. Captured by the Yaucha and imprisoned on BG-386, she spent thousands of years laying eggs for the predator's hunting games. She had a long time to stew in resentment, that is for certain, but skip a few millennia and the Matriarch found herself in the the clutches of the Wayland yutani Corporation, who poked the bear to be blunt. With a little help from the chaos caused by Specimen 6, she got free and set up shop at a colony in Freya's Prospect, building herself a fine hive. Well, that hive was short-lived, as she was eventually taken down by the ever-determined rookie. The age of the matriarch, which is rumored to be tens of thousands of years old, was not what set her apart from the other queens. No, 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 it was her physical appearance. She was far grayer than any of her younger counterparts. Her crest and face marked with what could only be called battle scars. But do not let the hag moniker fool you. This was no frail elder. Her hide was so tough it was practically bulletproof, shrugging off all manner of ballistic weaponry like it was nothing. If Rookie tried to take her on with conventional firepower, they would quickly learn that lesson. With Corporal Tequila's voice echoing in their ear, her skin is too tough. But thankfully, this ancient nightmare has breathed her last. The Samara Station Queen. Well, this is a weird one. The Samsara Station Queen, or as Karen Delacroix puts it, the nightmare incarnate, the devil made flesh, is a participant in the simulation that Toy forces Karen to go through and attempts to track Karen down. The queen herself is quite elderly and is unable to produce any more eggs. Knowing this, Karen makes the decision to infect herself with the last royal egg that the queen has left, forcing the queen to cooperate with Karen's comrades in some way. Next, the queen takes on the white hybrid after beating the tech sex that pursue them. After this happens, a white hybrid facehugger impregnates the queen as she is cocooned. Yeah, I know, what a surprise. Later, as the queen engages in combat with the hybrid king, she takes control of him and holds him against her chest, causing the chest burster to explode and destroy them both. Well, that marks the death of yet another queen. The Red Queen Mother, get ready to meet the leader of the rebellious Red Xenomorphs. The Red Queen Mother was a fiery monarch who took the Xenomorph throne to a whole new level. Literally, she was red. In the brutally merciless world of Xenomorph politics, the Red Queen Mother was one of a kind, waging a savage war against a rival Queen Mother in the comic Aliens, Genocide. This was not just any old battle against the Xenomorph, it was titans clashing with entire hives hanging in the balance. But the Red Queen Mother's reign was cut short by a team of 
of colonial marines under the command of Daniel Grant, who came to the conclusion that the best solution to the xenomorph problem was a nuclear strike. They blew her hive to smithereens, sending her red brood into chaos and the remaining red xenomorphs on the path to extinction. It would appear even a queen mother is not immune to a well-placed nuke. In the cancelled aliens Crucible, there was to be another Red Queen, rumored to be a less powerful version of the Red Queen Mother. Whether she would have had that same Imperial flair as her comic counterpart, we will never know. But one thing is for sure, Red Queen Mother is as deadly as they come. But unlike her black and gray sisters, she was encased in pale resin, the signature of her uniqueness in this hive. A little bit weird, but terrifying nonetheless. the Empress. Make way for the Empress. In the case of a queen alien, the Empress Xenomorph is more or less the ultimate power-up, an incredibly rare evolution that takes an already terrifying creature and turns it up to Tyrannosaurus Rex proportions. If a queen is a deadly matriarch, then the Empress is a powerhouse ruler, commanding several queens and their respective hives with no problem. The Empress certainly has to take no one's orders while she herself answers to the Queen Mother. Physically, she is an enormous variant, dwarfing her queenly sisters. While a typical queen may reach an intimidating 15 feet, an empress starts at that height and only gets bigger. Some grow to 20 feet tall and 40 feet long. Her crest, double-layered with a glossy top and a duller underlayer, serves as her crown, separating her from lesser xenomorph royalty. From her resilient mesoskeleton to her two pairs of arms, the empress is capable of enduring as much as she dishes out in damage. Behind that brawn are some brains playing the long survival game with icy, calculated efficiency. While an ordinary queen might sacrifice herself for the hive, the Empress harbors no such illusions. When it comes to a question of her or the brood, she will always choose herself to make sure she can live to rule another day. What a great leader, eh? In many ways, the Empress is the bridge between the Queen and Queen Mother. As the hive grows, so too does the Empress, perhaps reaching the level of a Queen Mother, that is, if she can survive long enough. And while her motivations might mirror those of a Queen, there is little question on the level of danger that she poses. You better have a really, really good exit strategy if you come face to face with this deadly terror the Queen Mother. Next up on our list, we have something special, the rarest of the rares. In the words of Ellen Ripley, the Queen of the Queens, the driving force behind the whole goddamn species. Yes, it is the Queen Mother. The Queen Mother is the very pinnacle of monarchy in the xenomorph hierarchy, a true royal giantess who makes the other queens look like mere pawns. Known by so many names like Super Mother, Hive Mother, Uber Queen, and Genetrix, she is extremely rare, a sort of xenomorph that shows up only when the the hive has reached the apex of its power. If you thought a regular queen was bad news, the queen mother is your worst nightmare evolved to terrifying new heights. Physically, she is a behemoth, towering over empresses and queens like they are her younger, much smaller sisters. Her royal comb might not be as flashy, but when it is the size of an industrial power loader, who needs flair? She stands at 52 feet, a living fortress with four arms, metallic teeth, and a tail that would cut through a fire team of marines faster than it would take to say the words game over. Of course, do not forget her tendrils lining her jaws, just in case the other terror-inspiring features were not enough. But what really makes the queen more than just a creature of size and strength is her serious mental mojo. This is not an all-brawn, no-brain xenomorph. She has brains, too, and wastes no time in using them. Telepathic? Yep. Able to infiltrate your dreams? Yep. She is like some sort of dark queen from a twisted fairy tale, using emotional manipulations and promises of love to to get her victims to their doom. She can even breed other queen mothers, ensuring that her terrifying legacy goes on and on even after she is long gone. The terror of the hive becomes completely different with a queen mother on the throne. And if she falls? Well, do not think it is over, because somewhere out there is just another queen mother churned up and ready to fight her way to the top to continue the terrible nightmare. Triplet Alien Queens. Just one alien queen was enough to give me nightmares. Now we got three? The triplet queens were leading a huge hive of xenomorphs with all the malice that one could expect from not one but three royal terrors. As Brand, Amanda, and Zula and their platoon encountered this unholy trinity, it was pretty obvious that they hit the mother load of bad news. Hundreds of eggs in that large chamber, overlooked by the three queens, were enough to make even the bravest marine rethink his career choices. But Brand was not about to let a little thing like 
triple alien queens that were the stuff of nightmares scare him off. A quick assessment, and he knew that the thinner ceiling of the chamber was as fragile as a xenomorph's patience for uninvited guests. Being a true marine, he plotted to bring the whole hive down about the heads of the queens. While his comrades held off the swarming xenos, Brand went on a mad dash through the chaos, planting door breaches and seismic charges like a man possessed, which when you think about it, he was. The platoon fell back, leaving Brand to his own devices as the chamber collapsed in a spectacular fashion, burying the queens in a well-deserved avalanche of debris. Fittingly enough, that was how it all finally came to an end for the fearsome trio, who went from ruling over the hive to being buried in it, and at the exact moment when it would appear that Brand had gone down with them, he simply pops up out of the rubble, dusting himself off and casually letting Davis know he is still alive. Arnold would have been proud. Marvelous Verdict, and that marks the end of yet another marvelous video. We hope you enjoyed our deep dive into the world of the Alien franchise. It sure was terrifying finding all the info about these Xenomorph Queens. I am definitely going to have nightmares for the next week. As our exciting adventure through the world of Xenomorphs draws to a close, we hope you have enjoyed the thrill of witnessing these amazing characters. So, stay tuned for more nightmare-inducing journeys in the captivating world of aliens and Xenomorphs. Which Xenomorph Queen among these did you find the scariest? Was there anything specific about them that captured your curiosity? Let us know all about it in the comments down below. And if you like this video, do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. It means the world to us when you help us grow. Until next time guys, have a good one.